Hello, welcome to this video. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you five things a flight attendant wants you to know as a passenger. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brie and I'm a flight attendant in Australia. I'm really excited to be sharing this video with you. When I first decided to do a YouTube channel, this is one of the first videos that I wanted to make, but I just never have made it. I've just been doing other videos. So I'm really excited to be sharing this video with you and to share this knowledge with you. This is five things a flight attendant wants you to know as a passenger. So number one is to wear sunscreen. If you're traveling on a plane, you need to wear sunscreen. It is really important. Not only are you so much more closer to the sun because you're obviously up in the air, but UVB and A rays are so much more harmful as you get closer to the sun. And UV A rays can actually still penetrate through the glass. So if you're seated by a window seat, it can do some damage because UV A rays, from what I know, is they do the damage to your skin and UV B rays, they actually make you look sunburned. So if you don't want to age or, you know, get any skin cancers or, you know, any complications in your skin, then definitely wear sunscreen. There also was a study done in the United States. The study shared that 56 minutes in the flight deck is equivalent to 20 minutes of radiation from like a tanning bed, like a sunbed. Obviously over time we've learned that tanning beds and sunbeds are really damaging and they can cause skin cancers or lots of things to your skin. So put on the sunscreen. I personally wear sunscreen every day at work to protect myself. So yes, sunscreen, wear sunscreen. Number two, I'm gonna talk about boarding passes. So as a passenger, when you present your boarding pass to a flight attendant at the door of the aircraft, what do you think they're looking at? If you said the seat number, you are incorrect. <laughs> I don't know how it is in other countries, but here in Australia, we don't actually look at the seat number. If we do, we're looking at it for courtesy to help you find your seat, but we don't need to look at the seat number. We are looking at all the other details on the boarding pass to make sure that you are boarding onto the correct flight. Um, so, you know, the flight number and the date and all those things we actually look at. So it's basically the last security check. If you ever board an aircraft and you say, hey, I'm at 24A, cool. <laughs> great, I can help you find your seat, but that's not what we're looking at. We still actually need to visually see your boarding pass and see those details to let you onto the aircraft. If that's news for you, let me know in the comments because before starting training, I thought flight attendants looked at the seat number, but that's actually incorrect. They don't actually look at that. So yeah, I hope that you learned something new. Okay, number three, I'm gonna be talking about bags. So if you get onto the aircraft and you find your seat and then you go to put your bag away in the overhead lockers, but your overhead lockers above you are all full, what do you do? So you can put it in another locker. Some passengers I've noticed don't know this. They think that um, perhaps the other lockers are reserved for other people. That is true when it comes to business class and like upgraded seats. But if you're just in a normal economy seat, you can basically put your bag anywhere on the aircraft as long as you can close the locker after. <laughs> so if there's no space above you, just look to the aisle across from you, see if there's any space there. If there's space there, put it there. If there isn't, then just look a couple rows away from you and see if there's any spots there. If there isn't, then call us and we're always happy to come and help you find a spot for your bag. <laughs> okay, number four, I'm gonna be talking about alcohol. <laughs> Did you know that one alcoholic drink on an aircraft is equivalent to two alcoholic drinks on the ground? I don't know why, but there's something about being in the air in a pressurized environment that makes the effects of alcohol double. So if you wanna have a drink on your flight, just make sure you obviously aren't drinking too many and make sure that you're counting your drinks because the last thing you wanna do on a flight is feel really sick, vomit. And of course, if you're going on holiday, you don't wanna to get to your destination and be so hungover that you have to go and sleep and not enjoy your vacation. So obviously as flight attendants, we have to responsibly serve alcohol. So we obviously can't get you drunk or anything like that, but it is just something to be aware of. So if you've had a couple drinks before the flight and you want a couple more drinks, like totally fine, but just make sure that you know your personal threshold and that you're counting how many drinks you have. And number five is time of useful consciousness. If there's a depressurization where there is a loss of oxygen in the cabin and the oxygen masks fall down you have a certain amount of time to put that mask on 
before you pass out. <laughs> so at 40,000 feet, which is the height that a normal aircraft usually flies at, you have 15 to 20 seconds to put on that oxygen mask before you pass out and go unconscious. 15 to 20 seconds isn't a lot of time, especially in a stressful situation. You want to be putting your mask on straight away because us as flight attendants, we of course are going to be going through the cabin when it's safe to do so to make sure everyone's mask is on, but we might not be able to get there within 20 seconds. You know, it might be a couple of minutes before we even get to you. And if you've been passed out for a couple of minutes because of lack of oxygen, um, yeah, that's really bad. So yeah, tip for you guys, do that. <laughs> so those are my five things that me as a flight attendant want every passenger to know. So I hope this video was helpful. If any of the things that I shared with you today are news to you, let me know in the comments. I'll be really curious to know if you knew these things already or if it is brand new knowledge. Also, if you want me to do a part two, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments because it was really hard narrowing it down to five. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in my next video. <laughs>